It has been said that Dubai is the city in which miracles were invented. Perhaps not of the natural kind. But yes, in the space of the last 12 to 13 years, a city has risen out of the desert in the like of proportions hitherto unknown to mankind. Maidan is the shining star, the embodiment and the dream of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And after a rainy start on Monday, Tuesday saw Bob Baffert admitted to hospital with a heart attack. It wasn't an ideal start to the week for Team Baffert. Patrick Shaw's rocket man was back to defend his title in the Golden Shaheen. Felix could see again aboard for Fred Crabier. The draw, rather unusual this year, in which the trainers were allowed to choose the draw they wanted. Bill Mott opting for Stallgate 1 and Game On Dude getting Stallgate 14. Breakfast with the Stars was the usual electric affair. Team Godolphin on display and Rishi Passad keen to get Frankie's opinion. Friday at Maidon was Ladies' Day. Chantal Sutherland and Hayley Turner the first two ladies to participate in the Dubai World Cup. And so to the Godolphin Mile, Glenn Schofield and Herman Brown teaming up. Team De Kock with Viscount Nelson. He was a lively contender and they were hoping as the horses marched towards the parade ring that he'd be able to pick up some booty. Kevin Shea calm and relaxed and Diane De Kock greeting Deanne Nagel. Peter Doyle in the background as Viscount Nelson strutted his stuff. A leg up from Michael de Kock aboard the Son of Giants Causeway. The red hot favourite in the race, African Story, and Duck Scholar representing the Herman Brown Junior Yard. Was the Dubai World Cup the topic of conversation here? Johan Malherba, Trevor Brown, Michael Shea, and Michael de Kock. As they came to the 200, it was absolutely race over for African Story, the son of Pivotal from the Godolphin Yard in those unmistakable Godolphin blue silks. A magnificent victory for the son of Pivotal out of the Gone West Mare, Frankie, his inimitable self. Number one for Godolphin. And savour the beauty of the horse. Mikhail Glinka from the Herman Brown Junior Stable was the first to leave the parade ring for a new race, the Godolphin Gold Cup. Michael de Kock had been very confident about a pinion pole from the Godolphin Yard but he expected Zanzamar, the son of Fort Wood, under Richard Hills, to run a mighty race. Nicky Bartlett from Danica Stud was optimistic for a good performance from Zanzamar. What happened next, we will not show you. Suffice to say, it was an absolutely tragic day for horse racing. Mike, have you ever seen anything uh, like this happen? I haven't, no, but uh, absolutely, thank goodness for some quick thinking. Otherwise, it could have been an ugly accident and uh, looks like the jock's up, which is most important. When they went past the, the, the first turn, we, we had a feeling that something like this may, may happen because I saw a, an outrider racing around the backside there, obviously, to try and stop them and the car's racing around on the inside to, to get them to stop. So uh, we anticipated something like that will happen. But, you know, at the end of the day, safety's first. Looking ahead to the night, uh, anything that, that stands out in your mind as far as your opportunities are concerned here on World Night, World Cup night? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those where we think they'll run well, but they may not be good enough to win it. Um, Mutahadi and, and Mick Dum have got a bit of class about them, but whether they're good enough to win, again, remains to be seen. How about the big one? How about the Dubai World Cup? If you give me fifth place, now I'll take it. Not too much confidence there. I think uh, very, very tough. There's, I think there's two or three really, really good horses. He's only rated 115. He's, in fact, rated uh, to run last almost. But he's pretty fit and well. He'll, he'll run well, but I just, I just don't see him winning it. And so to the United Arab Emirates derby. There is our hope, Mick Dom. Michael de Kock always believing that he'd have to step up to the plate in the face of the runners from Coolmore. This being one of them, Daddy Longlegs, a smashing looking son of Scat Daddy. And guess who's come to the races this afternoon? Diego Maradona, currently training in the United Arab Emirates at the moment. Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Maktoum and his advisors quietly hoping that Christophe Soumillon would make the right move on Mick Dam. Was it going to be a repeat performance of what had happened with Asiatic Boy a few years prior? 
he certainly looked the part. A beautiful looking son of Dabawi as Daddy Longlegs took up his position and Rote went to the post as the favourite. Falls of Laura the Philly, the Oaks winner. Gates open, they're racing in the UAE Derby and Falls of Laura slow to begin and McDarm didn't come out all that quickly. Helmet flew out of the machine and goes looking for the lead. Daddy Longlegs butt goes underneath him and will try and hold him deep going into the first turn. Rope behind the leading pair looking for a gap. Red Duke comes to the outside, past the 300. Daddy Longlegs went to the front. His stable companion Rope comes after him. Yangtze Kayang's running on down the centre of the track. Daddy's in front. Rope trying to reach him. Yangtze coming at the pair. Yangtze going after Daddy Longlegs. But Daddy Longlegs found more. He's in front and he's won the derby. Daddy Longlegs beat Yangtze Kayang. Rope third, McDarm fourth and then Red Duke. Followed by Ballada Sale and Lucky Chappie. A long break, Barano, Kinglet, Falls of Laura, Helmet, Maritimer, Enfatada and Gen 10 was last home in the UAE derby of 2012. An absolutely delighted Aidan O'Brien, with David and Deanne Nagel in the background, as well as Tom Magnia, and a top-class ride by Colm O'Donoghue, who stepped up to the plate just when it was needed. Christoph Sumion returning on McDum, probably not the most fortuitous ride he's ever given a horse. But that's racing, and you take the rough with the smooth, and you box on. Talking about boxing on, War Artist is doing just that. As Terry Spargo told us in his pre-race interview, he's had more trainers than he's had hot meals. August Rush, however, had taken the trip from Europe very well indeed. Despite the fact that he'd been in some rather cold climates, his coat looked outstanding and Glenn Schofield and Herman Brown Jr. were hoping for a big run. The same applied to the Paul Massaro trained Hortensia, herself a daughter of Testarossa, ridden by Craig Williams, and herself a multiple Group 1 winner. And so to the 1,000 metre start with Terry Spargo. Gates fly, and they're racing in the Elgar sprint. Mashua Joe from the inside, one of the first away. Addictive dream and joy and fun didn't begin all that quickly. By August Rush, Soul Power coming down the outside, and joy and fun on the inside. They're all across the track. Soul Power on the outside. Hortensia, Hortensia's flashing home. Hortensia coming from last. Hortensia's won the Elgar sprint. Aishin Virgo, regularly ready, prohibit, addictive dream and war artist. From last. Hortensia has won the Elgar's sprint. An absolutely magnificent performance by the daughter of Testarossa and kisses all round for a commendable performance by August Rush, who finished back in fifth. It was now time for the Golden Shaheen, and Felix could see in Fred Crabier's silks, went to the post on a bouncing Rocket Man. Rocket Man was there to defend his title, which he had won in such scintillating fashion the year before. Patrick Shaw was positive that he was as well as he'd been the year before. You know, I was worried when I went on it the first time, and it's always a worry, but uh, you know, only the race will tell how they're going to behave on it. Exactly what Patrick Shaw was referring to was the factor. Bob Baffert had been second to him the year before, and Fred Crabier knew that he hadn't come for a holiday, despite having had a heart attack. And so to the starting stalls for the Golden Shaheen. Racing in the Dubai Golden Shaheen and Rocket Man from the inside won the start by three quarters of a length. First quarter, a scorching 23.8 as Rocket Man brings them past the 600 metres mark. Rocket Man is the leader, only narrowly coming under the turn. He's being pressured by Giant Ryan. Rocket Man's in front, coming to the 250. Krypton Factor comes after Rocket Man. They're clear of Lucky Nine and Hitchens. Krypton Factor alongside Rocket the factor. Kieran Fallon victorious as Patrick Shaw delivered his post-race interview, obviously disappointed but not down and disconsolate, philosophical about the fact that Felix could see had done his very best under the circumstances. And so to the Dubai duty free. Douglas White aboard Ambitious Dragon, directly behind him Moussia to be ridden by Kevin Shea. 
out of the parade ring they go for their date with destiny. He looked very well, that ambitious dragon, and so too did the governor, Jeff Lloyd. He was aboard Extension. Paul Lafferty, chaffing the girls as always. And Kevin Shea, just marginally ahead of Christophe Soumillon, who was on Mutahadi, the son of Encosta de Lago, who Michael de Kock had the biggest hopes for on the evening. Tony Millard and his daughter Dominic. Aidan O'Brien and his team. Herman Brown and his assistant. And Team de Kock. They're set. They're racing in the Dubai Duty Free and Presbus came out very sluggishly. He's already eight lengths behind the bulk of the field. Cityscape, one of the first away, Ambitious Dragon, and Await the Dawn began well. But Cityscape had bounded away past the 300. He's four lengths in front of Moose, Ambitious Dragon, Muda Hattie, City Style on the outside, but Cityscape is giving them something to catch past the 100 metres mark. Muda Hattie's run to second. City Style is third, but Cityscape. Cityscape, a big, big winner. Cityscape wins the Dubai Duty Free from Muda Hattie and City Style. An absolutely staggering performance by the six-year-old son of Selkirk, Cityscape, in the hands of James Doyle, who'd stepped up to the plate in the absence of regular rider Steve Drown. Congratulations to trainer Roger Charlton and, of course, owner breeder Carla Abdullah. It was now time for the Longines Shima Classic. And the first close-up we got was of Olivier Pellier. He was aboard Cyrus de Anne, a very interesting horse from France, as Christophe Soumillon went to post on Bold Silvano, behind whom was Treasure Beach from the Aidan O'Brien Yard, and Kevin Shea on the daughter of Galileo, Mabuba, also from the Mike de Kock stable. Young Joseph O'Brien was aboard St. Nicholas Abbey from his father's stable, Aidan O'Brien. They're racing in the Dubai Shima Classic and Shimran and Jackal Berry both came out very awkwardly and dropped back to the tail of the field. Cyrus de Agler now moves up on the outside to tackle Bol Silvano and Cyrus de Zagler ran a neck in front of Bol Silvano who's holding the fence. Treasure Beach is third. Cyrus de Zagler moved up and took the lead from Bol Silvano. Treasure Beach is there to tackle on the outside. Beaten up's a length and a half away. St Nicholas Abbey behind them. Then Songcraft Marbuba on the outside. Cyrus de Zagler led with 200 metres left to go. Nicholas Abbey into the clear, comes after Cyrus de Zagler. Treasure Beach is third. Cyrus de Zagler in front. St. Nicholas Abbey's going to him. The post is looming up. Cyrus de Zagler hangs on and wins. Cyrus de Zagler has beaten Nicholas Abbey. Third to photo, Jackalberry or Treasure Beach. And uh, Cyrus de Zagler, he likes to fight. If there is a horse in front, he wants to pass him. If a horse uh, comes from behind, it pushes him. I don't know how it's just like a, a kind of um, miracle or très charmant or whatever. From a French lady to a French man, Christophe Soumillon taking his place in the lineup of the world's richest thoroughbred horse race. So too Chantal Sutherland, the first lady. And Ahmed Ajdebi getting a friendly word of warning from Bob Baffert. Don't beat me, buddy. The horse who'd finished third in last year's World Cup was the son of Dubawi, his name Monterosso, to be ridden by Mikhail Barcelona. Was it to be his day of glory as the horses took their place in the lineup at the 2,000 metre start? Next for action. Oh, smart Falcon Toey, one or two others on the move. Gates fly, they're racing in the Dubai World Cup. Master of Hounds on the inside, and so you think began quickly. Royal Delta fast away, Transend is hard ridden. Capone on the outside, and then Zazu, Prince Bishop, and Monterosso, followed by Asian Flash. There's no room for squibs. Capone's moved up three deep. Out of the back, and Capone takes the lead. So you think has the rail. Transend in the middle. Game on, dude out wide, continuing to improve. Capone leads for home. There's room for So You Think on the rail. Monterosso third and they broke away from Planter. Monterosso goes up to Capone. 250 metres out. Monterosso takes the lead from Capone. Planter's running on, but Monterosso's broken clear in the cup. 100 metres left to go. Monterosso driven out. is clear of Capone. Planter and So You Think. Mikhail does it again because Monterosso's won the cup. 
Zato has beaten Capone, Planter, and so you think. Then Zazu, Asian Flash, Master of Hounds, Royal Delta, Prince Bishop, Smart Falcon, Mendip, Game On Dude, and Transend came in last of all. Mikael Barcelona, trademark salute, this time not on the line like the Epsom Derby, but 100 yards short of the line as Monte Rosso, third last year, leads out a terrific victory for Mahmoud Al Zaruni and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, but particularly for Mahmoud Al Zaruni, who two years ago to the day had his first ever winner when Calming Influence won the Godolphin Mile, and now he's won one of the biggest prizes in the world. Sheikh Mohammed delighted, celebrating with John Ferguson. As I say, Mahmoud Al Zaruni, two years ago he hadn't trained a winner, now he's trained the winner of the biggest race in the world for the most important man in the country in which he resides.